exactly. Spoiler. That's the next one. <laughs> well, no, because we've got Jack Parsons and there's oh, a very yes, that's true. genetic sequence in Jack Parsons. Yeah. So lots of drugs. <laughs> sex lots of sex, drugs, and rock and roll. No, <laughs> sex season. drugs and rocket science. <laughs> oh right, Come sorry. On Sean. <laughs> rocket <laughs> ships. Going into Go ahead. No, going, in, going into season two uh, from season one, was there anything Amazon came to you and we were like, listen, we love the whole Irish changing thing. Let's maybe not brutally murder, you know, the pretty redhead on screen again. You know? <laughs> was there any kind of blowback from season one but that they were like? When you see this this season, you'll see that that most certainly was not one of the <laughs> yeah, they, they went the other way with oh, that. Oh, really? Okay, yeah. great. They said more brutal murderers of redheads. <laughs> nice. So that's why we brought Alicia Witt in. <laughs> <laughs> Was there a challenge in coming into season two with being the new showrunner and having, you know, what, what changed and what didn't change necessarily with that? It was, um, I guess, ch I wouldn't say challenge, it was fun. It was really exciting to come in and be able to, for them to say, you know what, Sean, go ahead and make, take season two and make it more of a Twilight Zone, more of a Black Mirror type show where we can tell a very simple character story but on an epic scale with more money, more production value. That is, that's a really exciting box to play in, sure. especially for someone who loves horror, and to be able to have that, you know, sort of the handcuffs taken off. How do you approach, um, you know, seeing like we brought up the Irish story, um, you know, these stories that are horrific, you know, in their historical accuracy, just and make that sort of not over the top or palatable to fans. You know, like I think if you watch yeah. the news right now, some of the things that we're seeing in the news that are happening right now. I think in the future people will wonder how did that happen and how is it that so many people turned away and did nothing. So I think I think that you know we're looking we're looking back on something that happened um, at a particular time and and once again a, a lot of the victims of Virgin Hill were prostitutes were, were people who were on the margins of societies and I, I, I'm not quite sure that we've changed all that much. I think I think horror we're lucky. <laughs> right. I like that. <laughs> I mean, I mean, yeah. You know, in horror, we're lucky that we can sort of go deeper because we're hiding it behind genre. So we can talk about we talk about immigration in a lot of this. We talk about family. We talk about soulmates. We talk about all sorts of different things. But a lot of what we're hitting on is what's happening today. But we're hiding it behind you know brutal murders. <laughs> I know this is Walking Dead related, but when did you first get word of Andrew Lincoln leaving? You know, and and Andy talked about it for a while because he, if you follow, um, he hasn't done anything else in nine years. It's the only thing that he's done except the promos for the Red Nose. <laughs> right, <laughs> right. Um, so uh, and and it took him away from his family for nine months a year. So this, this is something that, that I think you know he. he he probably wanted to leave earlier and just couldn't bring himself to do it. Is there any chance he might end up in the British I can't British talk about... No, 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 no. The British episode of Lore? Lore, yes. Oh my God. <laughs> right? From your lips yes. to Andy's ears. Yes. We would so, love yes, that. Now that he's available? Yeah. I mean, that that's the thing, is that the, the opportunity when you have an anthology and you're shooting for five to six days is you get to work with a Thomas Kretschmann or a Jurgen Prock now or a Doug Bradley and this amazing cast that we have um, because the, the commitment is not seven years of your life. Right. Would you say it's more of a challenge taking Aaron's podcast episodes and turning them to like a visual episode or doing a news story and breaking that? Um, you know what, they were both uh, equally difficult. In, in, a, in a good way, though. Again, trying to say, okay, Aaron has 400 years of information in this. How do we tell a story that's only 12 hours of this, like this girl's last 12 hours of her life? How do we tell that story and make it visually exciting? Or in the new ones, I mean, I guess maybe there's more freedom in the in the new stories because we we weren't tied to it. But I like I like being tied to his podcast too. It gave us that basic uh, building blocks to put our story on top of. And then, you know, and then, and then the challenge, of course, is that since it's an anthology and it's difficult to produce, I mean, when you see the, the episode Prague Clock, uh, we thought that would be the one easy one because we were shooting in Prague and there is a clock, an astronomical <laughs> clock. 
that once we were over there, because we were told, oh yeah, you can shoot there, no problem. It's under construction, no access. Our art department had to build the clock, and it's four stories high. There are six episodes. <laughs> Five of them are shot on location in Prague, including Pas uh, an episode I'm in Pasadena. I'm from Pasadena. So yeah, that's what I'm pointing. Yes. <laughs> including Gail so and Hearn. I'm the Pasadena <laughs> expert on finding yeah. a location outside Prague that could look somewhat like and it, and it worked. Yeah. But our Prague episode was shot on the stage. <laughs> That's funny. You know, um, we, we've talked about that, and, and I would love to do that. I mean, the first season we explored werewolves. We, you know, we this season we have witches. We had vampires last season, and uh, so you know, there, there's still there's still zombies to explore. Oh, for sure. I mean, if we if we shoot in say New Orleans or in Mexico. I think a lot more of the folklore of that time, especially New Orleans, has that zombie folklore that's real. Because remember, every every story is real, so we have to find the real zombies, but there are real zombies. Following up on that, were, have there been any stories from the show that you wanted to adapt that you decided to table because they were either too logistically complicated or maybe too gruesome so or many. disturbing? Okay. <laughs> yeah. So many of them. Because, I mean, you start with like 12 and you winnow it down to 6. Right. So already there are, you know, only half as many as we, we were passionate about telling from the very beginning. Like we wanted to tell, we, we talked about doing the story of the Pied Piper and then looking at the history of that, that maybe it was the recruiter for the Children's Crusades. And it just became this epic story that I didn't think we could tell in a, in a simplistic sort of 45 minute way that would be emotional. Right. So in that case, yes. <laughs> but maybe we can. <laughs> we might be able to figure out this year. We're going to be out of time. Okay. And thank you. Thank you. Thank you.